Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to continue our study in the book of Judges. And uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this morning, for the opportunity to study your word together, and we invite your spirit's presence here. We ask, Lord, that as we continue this study in the book of Judges, that the lines uh, that you have unfolded to us can be understood. And um, we need your, your presence in our lives. We pray for those that are grieving, those that are struggling in various ways. We just ask, Lord, uh, that uh, you can use us uh, to reveal your character that your Holy Spirit can impress hearts around us and that we also can obey your voice and go where you lead. We ask for your guidance in the decisions that we make each day, that we can hear your voice and go to the right hand or the left as you direct. And we give our hearts to you and our lives to you. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Uh, well, good morning, everyone. And uh, I talked a little bit about it before, so um, don't really know how to approach this topic. Um, so this this relates to our lines in a lot of ways. So one of the things that happened back in October thirteenth, uh, twenty eighteen, when I measured the three hundred and ninety one and a half days from noon October 13th to uh, midnight commencing November 9th, 2019. Um, that uh, the, the, the date October 13th had significance. So one of the things that we've looked at is it's the miracle of Fatima. So at noon on October 13th in 1918, um, we had this counterfeit miracle, the miracle of Fatima, that is uh, part of this line uh, that Tess had presented um, dealing with uh, a counterfeit line of the papacy. So, so that, and that was at the beginning of those studies in 2018 in the fall there. So when October 13th happened to be the date that uh, this was calculated from, I, I saw the significance of that, the miracle of Fatima, especially being noon. Um, but also we have midnight October 13th. That's the fall of Babylon in 539. Wait, that date sounds familiar somehow. Didn't I just hear that a few minutes ago from yes, your, yeah, that's what I'm saying. your sister? Well, yeah. So my brother David, for me personally, my brother David died October 13th, 1990. So um, and if I'm, I'm trying to remember correctly, so in, uh, so in 19, uh, now Tess is born, um, November 9th, 1990, right? And AOC was born. Uh, October 13th, um, 1989. Does that sound right? Sounds like it. Yeah, I think that's right. So anyway, these these October 13th and November 9th are, are connected together. Now, um, so, so my brother passing away, my brother David is the one who influenced me to be a Christian. Um, he was 10 years older than me. When he died, he was 37. And uh, uh, he was a huge influence in my life in many ways. Um, and uh, so his death, there's lots dealing with his death and how it affected me. But um, he, he wasn't an Adventist, but he had been exposed to Adventism. But every Adventist he knew was a lunatic. So 
he said I was the only normal Adventist he had ever met. Um, so he met a lot of strange people. I could go into these stories of these people that he knew, so that they weren't generally good people. Um, but uh, but those are the people he knew. And and uh, can you define what you mean by good? Not good people, like really uh, evil people. They that, did things to, to hurt people yeah. and that kind of stuff intentionally. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so I get it. So these are the type of Adventists he knew, and uh, now he knew a couple that weren't necessarily evil, but they were not really, you know, not good Adventists. So, um, and then my sister-in-law Angela, she passed away uh, um, on May thirteenth of a stroke. So that she was married to my brother Dave, and uh, she died thirty-two years and seven months. Uh, after he died so that's that symbol has to do with the islamic calendar coming around in this case it's eleven thousand nine hundred days um so so which is kind of interesting as you know stephen was born eleven thousand nine hundred days before september 11th uh 2001 so so anyway this and it's not so much about these lines and these histories i mean it's it's terrible when somebody passes away um, now, my, yesterday is when we heard about it. My brother Dave would have been 70 had he, had he lived. That was his 70th birthday yesterday. And that's when we heard about Angela's passing. And uh, so Angela was married to my first wife, or not married. Angela's the sister of my first wife, pardon me. Um, so two brothers married two sisters. And uh, um, so there was... Um, uh, you know, a lot, uh, you know, very close. Obviously, my kids and their kids are double cousins. And um, so there's a bunch of stories, just a bunch of thoughts. Obviously, I'm still going through, you know, processing this whole thing with Angela passing away. Um, so so it's kind of a, you know, a difficult thing, uh, you know, to sort of be talking about the lines and and these different dates. But for me, there's a significance there. So just like when my brother passed away and Angela's passed away, um, I can see the significance of that, these symbols, right? So um, whatever this means, I mean, it's, it's births and deaths. Uh, these things are symbolic in the Bible, these spans of time. And... Uh, what I see is that God gives us an opportunity to recognize his hand in our lives. Um, and, and that's something that, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to all of these numbers and these dates and these things that we find in our lives, um, you know, we don't do no numerology. We're not trying to, predict the future. We're not trying to control and manipulate God. Um, but because we're in this movement and we, we understand the symbolic use of numbers, we can see these numbers occurring. And, you know, I mean, it seems almost kind of silly sometimes, but, you know, for instance, uh, uh, the guy, the customer came into the store yesterday and he bought some uh, uh, cables and, uh, you know, I, I printed out a copy of the receipt here. I don't know if, you, if this will see, you can see this. Um, you probably would have to. Well, if you look at it on your simple, I don't think anybody on the computer thing can see this. But the total of it is eleven nine eighty nine, which you know that's the beginning of the time of the end, right? And of course, I had these two other receipts two days in a row, 1764. Um, uh, so, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. So we can look at these numbers and we can look at these, these things and we can make a lot out of it. That is, we can, uh, we can, uh, I mean, we can see for us individually, we can see that God is leading but we can't we can't let those things um, 
you know, take precedence, right? Because what really matters, what really takes precedence is our obedience to God, right? You understand what I'm trying to say? That, you know, these aren't, these aren't coincidences. These are God speaking to us through his spirit to bring a conviction and a power to our lives that we can repent and confess. And if we don't repent and confess our sins, if we don't turn away from our evil ways, doesn't matter how many numbers we see or how many, how many evidences God puts in our way, we have to obey his voice. And so when you think about somebody passing away, Angela, she, she had been exposed to Adventism. Um, she, she was friends. Uh, actually, she was introduced. So some of you know who Kelly Ross is. And Kelly Ross lived with my family when I was a teenager. And he's the one who actually introduced Angela to my brother David, because they were both artists. And uh, I still remember the day I met Angela. Um, I was... Uh, playing golf in my backyard just had a little putting green and kelly came with this this girl and uh the, my brother david came out and you know we visited and stuff and and uh you know through that contact of course i found my first wife angela's sister and you know had seven children right so married for 30 years but the family was very uh you know, very troubled, right? So lots of difficulty there. The mother was raised in a prison camp in Indonesia, Japanese prison camp. So they had some problems. And when we look at, at these choices that people make, we look at the choices that we make and the people around us make. Those choices are the things that determine our destiny. Right? Even though we have to see God's hand, and we can see how he speaks to us through the scriptures, through his divine providences. It's the choices that we make each day that determine our destiny. Well, you know, that's awfully funny, Theodore. Because mm -hmm. um, I just sent you an email in response to your uh, inquiry as to uh, your worries. Yeah. And... Um, that is exactly the subject that I wanted to discuss with you in the contract. Well, okay. not just you, not just you, but the entire group. But I don't think this should be a public thing right at this particular time. Mm -hmm. um, I think it should be a, 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 a private confab between. Uh, I don't the, know what a confab is. You, you got a computer in front of you? Go con, C-O-N-F-A-B meaning and just read it okay yeah i just don't like things in code right so, i know you don't but yeah, it, but it, who's it, been it, who's been coding us all this time i don't who's i don't been, who's been I sending us code it, all this time i don't see it the same way at all uh, well so i don't want to have that's, that's, that's what i need to have this confab with you yeah well it's an informal private conversation or discussion yeah Anyway, exactly. so, that's my request. Okay, well, that's, yeah. Anyway, my point, because I don't know if I understand your point at all, but what my point is, is that, you know, we're making decisions each day. And so we have to recognize that, you know, we can look at these numbers, we can look at these dates, and what matters is what God is showing us prophetically. And what he's showing us has to do with the decisions that we make each day, right? We have to make those decisions based upon the conviction of the Holy Spirit, um, not upon feeling, not upon our imagination or fantasy. Um, so, you know, to see, um, for me personally, to see somebody that I knew what does that mean? really well passing away, um, you know, to me, the impact that it has on me, uh, but especially in the symbols that were attached to it, right? So with my brother, Dave, and now my sister-in-law, Angela, 
um, that symbol of 11,900 days means something to me because it's part of our prophetic message. And so when people are born, when people are die, die, this is really part of what the Bible talks about. This is the period of probation that is given to each one of us. And these symbols then, uh, we need to realize that what they're talking about, what God is saying to us, is that we have a period of probation that is going to close. And we don't know when that is, right? No one can know when their probation is going to close. You can close it yourself in the choices that you make, but, but God is the one ultimately who can decide your probation has closed. And so at the end, when he says, let him that is righteous be righteous still, let him that is filthy be filthy still. This is God recognizing the choices of man. And, you know, so we talk about closes of probations in our lives because they do exist in type. And, and some of those are very real to the individual individuals involved. November 9th, 2019 is a close of probation. Right? It's not let him that is righteous be righteous still. But it is definitely uh, for many who had rejected light and have gone into darkness that many of those will never come out of that darkness. And so that's what we have to be concerned about in our own lives. Now, God gives us many, many opportunities. But when we die, our probation is closed. There's no second chance. There's no coming up in a resurrection where God gives us a choice again. I mean, in a sense, you could say all of the wicked have a choice. And it's going to be quite clear when they come up in the resurrection of the wicked that they had made that choice and they're going to acknowledge that they made that choice, but there's nothing in their confession of their sins and their uh, bowing their knee to Christ that can make them change. They're in too great a darkness. And so we have to be careful about our own selves because I think that we're in much greater danger than we imagine. It's very easy to see the sins of others. It's not so easy to see the sins that lie so close to you. So, so those are my thoughts. I mean, there's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of thoughts that, you know, I'm still going to have to process. But to me, this was somebody somebody I really cared about who passed away. And, um, and I care about the family. And so I don't know if I have opportunities with anyone in that family uh, anymore to witness to them. Uh, maybe my nephew, um, who just lives not far from here, just a few blocks away. But I haven't seen him much lately. So that was his mom that, that passed away. And when his dad passed away, you know, he was only 10 years old. So anyway, so that's, that to me is an important part of understanding these lines. That these aren't just lines on a piece of paper. These aren't just a bunch of numbers. This is God speaking to us about his purposes and his plans for us, both individually and as a group, and for humanity, a message that's going forth. And so, from my perspective, this is something that is very sobering, that should be sobering to us. Sobering to us that, that something, at least to me personally, you know, that my sister-in-law uh, passes away, you know, 11,900 days after my brother, that means something to me. It may not necessarily mean something on the big lines, but it means something to me. And, um, and, it, and it has to be sobering. There's nothing that in that that would be uh, uh, you know, that would lead to the exaltation of self, to trusting in self, to thinking that I'm, I'm better than anyone else. 
It's actually quite, quite the opposite. And, and so that's the important thing that we need to understand about these lines. Um, you know, and Iran notes that the, the day my sister-in-law passed away, Angela passed away, was 777 days after March 27th, 2021. So again, another significant way mark. Just keep getting better and better. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I don't know about better. I don't, I, I wouldn't use the word better when somebody passes away, but I understand what you, you mean. You wouldn't use the word better. Yes, I would not. I don't think it's appropriate. So, um, Do anyway. You don't think it's appropriate, bro. Yes, it's not appropriate. It's not appropriate to, to use the word better when somebody passes away. That's all it, I'm it, saying. It, 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 okay, whatever. Let's confab, bro. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so what we have done, so we're going to go look at the line. So we have here, we've been studying judges six, seven, and eight, right? So we, we, we dealt pretty much with chapter seven. And so we want to start looking at chapter eight. Now, the main thing with chapter seven that we, we finally finished with is, um, uh, yeah, actually, we have to deal with some of the stuff here in chapter seven as well. So we had we had placed the verses on the line, and um, so let's go there. So we dealt with the fact that twenty three to twenty five is the third angel arriving, and but it's uh, we we haven't really dealt with what these symbols are here so so we need to address that um, so let's read these verses and the men of israel gathered themselves together out of naphtali and out of asher and out of all manasseh and pursued after the midianites and gideon sent messengers throughout all throughout all mount ephraim saying come down against the midianites and take before them the waters unto beth bara and jordan then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side Jordan. So we, we spent a lot of time on Oreb and Zeb. So what are Oreb and Zeb? If we can recall that. So didn't they have something to do with uh, uh, Japheth or I'm not Jap, Jap, Jap. There's some place in the judges there. I can't remember the whole thing, but I know that these guys were like, we thought they were messages. Yeah, they're messages. And, and these uh, messages... Uh, um, so they relate to um, in this situation are you referring to Oreb and Zeb being like the wolf and the raven yeah so it's the wolf and the raven and so so we relate these and, and I think this was part of what Colin was upset about when we were doing some of these um, uh, these studies because he had watched things dealing with Oreb and Zeb and also uh, uh, um, what's the name of that? Uh, Penuel and Sukkoth, right? And this is where he uh, said that, um, what was the word he used uh, to describe that I said that they were a curse, right? So we look at the Oreb and Zeb as relating to these messages of, of Colin and and Odilia, right? I wonder That's why he got any kind of bad impression off of that. Well, because he doesn't take into account the context, right? Yes. So, right. So when we even look at Gideon, when Gideon uh, makes the ephod, 
I mean, that relates to these lines, to these messages of these lines that become a stumbling block, right? And so, so even though these symbols, we, we can look at Orb and Zeb and just say they're bad, right? Because this is the Midianites who are oppressing them. What we see is that within this movement, there is a spirit or an attitude that exists that is hindering the true message. And those, those things, those messages, are truth mixed with error. That is, there's valuable light that all of us can benefit. Because this is not about people. When I say it has to do with Colin and Adelio's message, it's nothing to do with them personally. It has to do with these messages that came. But people are attached to the messages. Yeah, people are attached to them, but they don't have to stay attached to them. That's right. Right? So it's no condemnation of a person because this is something that exists within this movement, within us. This is a reform line. This is about us being reformed, right? And so we need to recognize that there is this strife, because that's what the Midianites are, their strife, and this strife exists within the movement. And this is what God is trying to address. That's what we understood when we went through the story of Gideon. Because that's that's the enemy, right? Strife. And, and so this conflict with strife, with, with the Midianites, we have Orb and Zeb. These are messages. And have these messages created strife within the movement? Are they part of that strife? Yes. Right. So the slaying of Orb and Zeb is addressing the end of that strife. Right? So this is a good thing. It's not that the messages themselves are bad. It's not like what Colin presented was some kind of spe specious error, you know, that needs to be rejected because we recognize that it's light. It's light that's given to the movement to address the problems that exist within the movement. Same with Adilio's message. This is light from God. The problem is us, not the messages that God gives. It's our response to light that is the problem. And if we if we're in strife, that is if we're we're proud and we're self-exalting and and we're critical of others, and you know, we can see other people's sins, but we can't see our own sins, then you know. then those messages aren't doing their work in us, but those messages can do their work, right? They were created to do a work to remove the sins that exist in us, to restore this movement, to reform it. And so we need to recognize this. So when I say on, on the charts, we have, this dealing with Orb and Zeb and the, the uh, Ephraim, right? Gideon sending these messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim. So this Gideon is this message of July 18th, and he gives this message to Mount Ephraim. Mount Ephraim represents, Ephraim represents this movement come down against the Midianites. And so this movement is going to defeat Orb and Zeb. So Oreb and Zeb are, these are messages given to reform this movement. So what I see is that when we, we put it there as January 11th to 12th, 2023, it's at the end of Colin's line that this begins, right? That this happens. And so, so that's what's happening. We're in that history right now. We're in the time of the divorcement right? To go back to Ezra. 
you know, and it's my concern that, you know, we what we do is we see the problems with others, but we don't recognize the danger that we are in. And and part of what has to happen is Colin's message and Odilio's message. These need to be studied and understood because these are the messages that God gave as part of this reform. Because why did God give these enemies to Israel? What was the purpose? To chastise them, to remind them that they needed to adhere to the covenant right. that had been offered. Yeah. So he sent them to reform them, right? Agreed. Right. It's not like the Israelites are good and these enemies come in and, you know, the Israelites are all just heroes defeating these, these enemies. These enemies come in because Israel needs to be reformed. Here, Israel is doing what? When Gideon is under this oppression of the Midianites, what is their main form of worship? They're worshiping Baal. I idolatry yes yeah 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 it's bail worship right so this is us right this is not somebody else out there this is us right this move is a message to the movement right so so we need to keep that in mind because the reason i became a christian in the first place is i read the bible and when i read the bible the thing that i noticed about the bible is it didn't flatter humanity it showed us our true condition. It spoke to me as an individual and saying, you're a sinner. The other religious books I read did not do that. They flatter humanity, right? There's something about the gospel yep. that it shows us that we're sinners. Now, many people use religion to make themselves feel better about themselves. That is, they misuse the Bible, misuse the Bible. They come up with little theories and ideas that are these pet theories that, you know, it's going to be lunar Sabbath or it's how you look at the Godhead or whatever it is that people put up as a test. And the reason they put these up as a test is because it's something that's not across to them at all. It, it flatters self. It's part of their pride about themselves. And so this is the danger that we have anytime we, we study the Bible without God's spirit is we can think we're better than others because we believe correctly about this or that. As if that's what saves you. And yet what the Bible's supposed to do is bring this conviction. So when we look at Orb and Z, this is an enemy that God brought to us, but it's a message and it's a true message. We shouldn't take Oreb and Zeb as a false message because it came from God to reprove us. I hope that's, that's clear what I'm saying. Now, I realize I'm a little bit more emotional than usual, but I still haven't processed the death of my, my sister-in-law. So, but the, that's the, the emotional impact that I think it has upon me, is at least is something good. I don't think it's, it's evil uh, to feel emotion, but it's just that I feel that we're in great danger. That's what I feel. Okay, so when we get to chapter 8, and that's why we start this uh, line, um, we're actually going to go all, all the way back when we deal with Judges 8. We don't really start with Judges 8. We ju judge, start with Judges 7, verse 19. But really, that is a zoom into this Judges 7, verse 23 to 25. So... And what we see is that there's this, this line that's created that's going to bring us back again to that. 
So the men of Ephraim said unto him, why hast thou served us thus that thou calledest not when thou wentest to fight the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. So, so the men of Ephraim, the movement, they claim that they weren't called, right? So this, this Ephraim shows up again and again, and it represents this movement in some way, some aspect of this movement. And then it, it says to, to Gideon, now Gideon again is a message, right? That you didn't call us. So what does this mean? That you did not extend a special invitation to us. Okay. So but what does that mean within the movement? What What is this trying to describe? Well, <clears throat> I would place it with the men of Ephraim that they wanted their views to be front and center as some kind of a special invitation that you need to be with us because what you said is so correct. Okay. Explain that further. Well, just like with the situation with Colin. Yeah. He wanted to believe that Trump was going to be reelected and that Trump was going to be the impetus to a Sunday law coming forward. Yeah. He believes that his interpretation is 100% correct and not uh, subject to any review or questioning. Right. So it's now, be discussed shouldn't be discussed that it should just be accepted because this is the way it's going to be yeah now when it wasn't accepted by everyone mm -hmm. when it was questioned it became the point that he along with many made that the others were wrong and that they had no part in what was to his mind become the the basis of the movement right so so when we look at this ephraim so we try to take ephraim in connection with with this whole story of the judge so we have these messages but ephraim isn't a message Ephraim just represents the movement. Right. Right. Um, and, and I think we can do that. I think we can do that based upon uh, how we've dealt with these lines. So we look at the judges and the enemies as messages. But um, there has to be something here that represents the movement. Right. And so in this case, it's going to be Ephraim. And, and the tribes, too, to some degree, represent aspects of the movement. We don't see <clears> the tribes <throat> represent messages, right? Right. Okay. So, so this is how we've been addressing these lines. Now, when it comes to uh, this claim that they weren't invited, we say, well, they were invited. Right? We can, <clears throat> we can see that they definitely were invited, but they were being very unjust and, and severe in accusing that others weren't just accepting what was being said. Okay. Yeah, so... So the, and, and they shared common boundary with with Gideon, right? Agreed. I mean, the, the whole point here yeah. is they look at this as being a perilous and doubtful undertaking. Mm -hmm. 
because they don't believe that the studies that have been going on are according to Miller's rules. Well, they wouldn't even know. Well, no, let's in, in this situation, and I'm I'm referring here back to to Collins' prediction. Yeah. <clears throat> in no way is this according to Miller's rules. Yeah, I know. But it is in his mind a a point because he believes that he is following Miller's rules. Yeah, but when you're not going to look at the study, you're not going to look at other evidences, other scriptures, because you have to bring all the scriptures together that bear upon a topic. Agreed. Right. You can't you can't pick and choose and say, well, we're going to we're just going to look at these ones that I want to look at. But these other ones are immaterial. Well, I went through this with another brother. When when I explained several years ago that I believed we needed when we're searching the scriptures, we needed to also be searching the spirit of prophecy to bring all of these passages together, whether it's in scripture, spirit of prophecy, it's all God's word. Mm -hmm. His comment to me is that I, I was very wrong, that I shouldn't treat the spirit of prophecy the same way that I would treat scripture. And it became a point that the two of us had to agree to disagree. Yeah. People misuse Ellen White's statements about um, you know, presenting truths to others who aren't Adventists, that we need to use God's word, but that no way diminishes Ellen White's writings as less inspired. Right. So, so anyway, when we deal with this, the Ephraimites, with the, the men of Ephraim or the children of Ephraim, um, they tend to have this problem. They're, they're one step behind. And, and it's going to eventually come out into all out war. Right in the story of Jephthah. Right? I would agree. Yeah. So, so this is, you know, this is this movement. Right. This isn't talking about other people. This is talking about us. And because it's going to be Ephraim that defeats Oreb and Zeb, right? So this movement has this opportunity to do this. Now we know the movement is is going to be in conflict to, to try to understand that. I mean, we're in conflict, right? So, so we're going through something that we need to go through in our experience in this movement. Now, so they said that they weren't called, right? But we know that Gideon, he, he responds correctly. What was I able to do in comparison to you, of you? Then their anger was abated toward him when they had said that, when he had said that. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. So when we look at these lines, so we'll go here. We know that there's this, um, these things aren't placed quite in the order when we, when we drew up this line, try to understand that. We're going to actually take that this uh, Judges 8, verse 4, faint yet pursuing, so that they're going to cross over Jordan. Uh, we're going to place that as December 25th, 2021. But, of course, it's going to include the, the, the ne next three verses that follow. So we put Judges 7, verse 19 here is July 19th. 
Now we're saying that that's, that's the call, that's the trumpet being blown. Now, in this period of time, we have this story of the men of Ephraim chasing Oreb and Zeb. Now, um, so when we put it on this line, we put it on this line. Um, this Oreb and Zeb doesn't, doesn't really, uh, like we didn't put those verses there. We didn't put the story of Oreb and Zeb on this line of chapter eight. But we see the Judges 8, verse 1 to 3, we're going to address it here as December 6, 2020. So this is this movement here. So, so we're saying the messages of Orb and Zeb are representing that history. But that's the third angel arriving, right? So you see what I'm saying here? I'm trying to explain this. So this is the third angel arriving. This is the story of Norb and Z. That's January 11th to 12th. But when we start this line here, we start with Judges 7, verse 19. So that includes the story of Orb and Z. That is, it includes that whole battle that occurred, right? Does that make sense to people? Because July 18th is that battle you know, that that defeating of the enemy, the 300. Jeff applied it to July 18th. But now we look at July 19th, that's going to be the aftermath. Right? But we're using it with the trumpet call that was the call to battle of July 18th. Does that, does that make sense to people? Am I... Do you understand how I'm creating these lines? How we created them? I would say that it has to look logical. Okay. So, so now we're just, we're just taking all of that that's there and we're just putting here, it's July 19th. So after July 19th, we have a, a time of the end. We have a first message arriving. And this message relates to after July 19th. And so this is the first angel arriving. I'll just do it this way. And we know that there is an increase of knowledge. We're going to have all of these studies that are leading up to December 6, 2020. So December 6, 2020 is the declaration. But we're saying that this is this formalization of the message. Right? So the message is formalized. Now, again, this is a message that is a rejection of light. But we're saying it's a formalization of a message. So how is the message formalized? And see, we haven't actually addressed what this line is as far as the darkness. So, so we're saying it's formalized. So we need to know what the first message is and then how it's formalized by this declaration of December 6, 2020. We're saying that in this, this is going to be the men of Ephraim complaining that they weren't called, right? So even though we have the Orb and Zeb thing in the other line here, here it's just gonna be focusing upon their complaint. So there's a complaint that's made on December 6, 2020. And so this, this here isn't addressing Colin and Odilio's message in this line, right? It is in the January 11th to 12th, 2023, the third angel arriving, it is addressing that. But here it isn't. Here it's going back. And, and so what we can see is that this message of after July 18th, this is an era that's in this movement that has continued that leads to what we see with Penuel and Sukkoth. So how do we address this? What, what happens on December 6, 2020? That's a formalization of the message, which means what is the message that is being formalized? And so what is this line about?
Would it be our preparation to be able to give the final message beginning with the church? Okay. Um, well, I don't see that in this line. I mean, it's it's all part of that line because this is all about the Sunday law and the message that we have to give. But more specifically, this line, based on these events that we have placed in it, there has to be a particular darkness that is being addressed by this arrival of the first message. Okay, so Iran says a papal spirit. And... Can we see that that is what's being addressed here? Can we make it even more specific? Because we know, just like when we talk about the message that we have to prepare to give to the church, or we talk about you know, the strife here in this, this is the, this conflict. So definitely a papal spirit would be part of it. Is there some way that we can zoom into this a little more clearly? That we could, if because if we look at these events, we have the declaration of December 6th. We have the confrontation uh, with Mark Johnson, with the American group. And then we have the confrontation with Colin, with the Canadian group. It's not really a confrontation with Colin because Colin is not the one I'm actually having a confrontation with. It's basically the Canadian group. And then we have this February 12, 2022, which we now understand to be uh, this 391 words, as well as Odilia's presentation. And then we have the February 16th email, whether that's the best way mark or not, but that's just dealing with... Uh, the group not supporting our studies. So taking away the link. So they, for the first time, they are inviting people to the studies and don't include my studies. Right, so that's what we had, whether that's the correct way or not. So if we're going to look at this and try to define this instead of this broad thing of papal spirit, but define this in some other way, what is, what is this conflict about? What is this line about? What is it reforming us from? Why is it leading to, you know, January 11th through 12th, Okay, so when, what was the main problem we had of why July 18th didn't end up with the destruction of Nashville as we predicted? What was the reason it didn't? Because we didn't understand fully that this was part of a line of failed predictions. Okay, so, so one is we didn't understand that line of failed predictions. And, and we didn't understand that we were unprepared for what was going to come, right? So when we looked, for instance, at Jeff's presentation on July uh, 11th, 2020, you know, we could see that he's talking about after July 18th, right? So his message, that second message there, is going to be connected to this first message in this line, right? So if you look at the line above, we have this message about... Um, what's going to happen after July 18th, that there's going to be a change in the movement. And definitely there's a change. So we get to July 19. Um, I mean, I'm going to present again what I presented uh, to some degree, why we're disappointed. And I'm going to go through that in, in that initial week. 
um, that we had this failed prediction. And, and my emphasis is in the fact is that we were unprepared because what struck me the most prior to July 18th was the problems that existed within the movement of what they expected to happen. They expected to be vindicated. And the one thing we knew is that it, there has to be a disappointment. And so I said, well, what is the disappointment? You know, it's that it it's actually happens. It would be a disappointment. But really the disappointment uh, um, is about the failure of this movement, right? This movement cannot possibly, could not possibly have handled what was going to be happen to the movement if that event had occurred. Right, because we were not ready. Yeah. So in this, what we see in this line is we see we see this enemy, right? This this darkness, right? And this darkness is really something within ourselves. And and this conflict, this problem, we see on the December 6, 2020 declaration. It's not so much about what's said in the declaration in this line, because this is about a complaint. We weren't called. And, and I think specifically about Bronwyn saying, you didn't really warn us about the failure of this prediction. Right? She's saying, you know, you say, oh, you knew in, in, a, in a mocking way, right? But you didn't really tell us. Right, so that fits in perfectly with Judges eight, verse one to three. So, so if we say that this is about this warning, it's not just about the warning of of the failed prediction, though it's connected to that. But it's really about why the prediction is going to fail. And we can see with December sixth that they have no interest in backing down. They have this committee set up with a predetermined uh, you know, conclusion. So it's just a mock committee because they already know what they want to say. And so when they issued that declaration, we can see that there's a bunch of symbols there, right? We know it's December 6th, so they pick a really good date, 126. But you, know, you can take 126 and multiply it by 20 and you get you know, 25, 20. So that's the 126 shekels and divided, you know, multiplied by the 20 giras, right? So they, they give us this symbol here. Um, and and this, their hand is sort of forced a little bit because I don't think they were originally planning to release it on December 6, 2020. I think it was moved ahead a bit because of Daniel Vanderhorst's presentation, his personal testimony on December 5th. And, and of course, putting that on uh, the WhatsApp group and putting it on YouTube on that date, right? So, so we end up put, posting this, the study, his testimony. And it wasn't me that posted it. It was Kelly Ross who posted it on the WhatsApp group. I just put it on YouTube. But they thought Kelly had, but anyway. Um, and then we also had uh, December 4th is connected with that as well. So there's a paper called Three Days that I wrote that deals with those three days, the 4th to the 6th. <clears throat> so then we're going to say the empowerment of that is going to be October 2nd, 2021. So why, what specifically is October 2nd? Would it be close to probation? I, I didn't catch what you said, William. I said, wouldn't it be a close of probation? 
well, it's not a close of probation. It's it's the empowerment of the first angel's message. So, so we're saying that there's a message that's formalized on December sixth, and oh, this. I message, thought you were talking about. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about October the twenty second. October? No. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, this is October second, not twenty second. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, so on October second, this is going to be this conflict. Right. So it's going to be, uh, yeah, so it's it's Mark Johnson. He's going to be presenting some, some things that don't really make sense. You know, the DNA is going to be changed. And uh, uh, if we get vaccinated and we won't be able to, you know, we'll be owned by the drug companies. And there's a bunch of other stuff too. But there was also the conflict with Daniel Fontenot which I didn't understand in that he, there already seemed to be some issue uh, with me that, that really caught me off guard with Daniel Fontenot because he's somebody I respect and um, I never knew I had an issue with him. Uh, but I'd made some comment regarding uh, the papacy that he took as me stating that really the papacy wasn't our enemy and and so i didn't i didn't really understand how that how he responded in that way so i tried to clarify the point and then when mark johnson started talking about this amalgamation and and uh daniel fontenot supported these ideas that that there was uh that man and beast were genetically modified together prior to the flood, which is uh, something I used to believe until I studied into what Ellen White says about it, right? So this was just a common view that a lot of people had. Um, so I'm trying to get to find this here. One of these. So going back to 2021, I'm trying to find my email here. Um, yeah, so this is going to happen uh, October 2nd. We have that conflict. And then I'm going to write uh, Daniel Fontenot on October 3rd. And we're going to have a brief email exchange that ends on October 9th. Right. So this is this week that is involved. So October 2nd to October 9th. So this is the conflict that I had with with. Daniel Fontenot. So it starts, of course, on that date, October 2nd. But yeah, Daniel Fontenot never responds to me after that. So after we have this final exchange, he writes me on the 9th. Um, um, so he asked this question. So I'm going to read this question. So he sends basically a uh, three sentence email. So he says, uh, good morning, Brother Theodore. I have a question. So I guess that's one, two, so there's five sentences all together. You say that we as a movement are not in unity with one another. I do not say that I am in agreement with that claim, nor do I deny it. But to what do you attribute this supposed disunity? And so I respond to that. He never responds to my email. It's not a super long email. I have uh, you know, six paragraphs, short paragraphs. Um, but this this idea of that the movement is not in unity. I've had every time I have said this, there is, and I've had people really really angry at me that I would even claim that the movement is not in unity. So, so what does this mean then if we're going to mark October 2nd to 9th as this empowerment of the first message? Can we see that the movement is not in unity and that this, this comes to a head within the movement? So December 6th, we can just say, oh, those people left because that's what, and I'm always amazed at this. 
you know, we saw it when Parmindo's group left. What do people do when they, they get kicked out and the other group separates or whatever? What do they do that they shouldn't be doing? Talk smack about the other ones. Right. So, so we somehow, oh, we're better than them. Well, by saying so, you're showing that you're exactly like them. And so we can see that even though we have this December 6th, and I'm not trying to be critical of Daniel as a person, but that, that often we can, we can see because we're conservative, because we don't, we make the right choice. He chooses July 18th, 2020 as being valid. And he makes very good arguments after December 6th of why, you know, so he's going to do lots of really good presentations about July 18th, 2020, after December 6th, 2020. But we know that what happens here is he's not aware that we're still infected with this problem. The problem is not whether you side with July 18, 2020 or not, because you can, you can be on the right side of the issue, but still be all wrong. That is, you haven't learned the lesson of what God was trying to show us. So we have this date here, October second to ninth this week right and we can see that 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 is judges 8 8 right that's the verse that we chose now you, you could also include these other verses but 8 8 becomes a symbol um and and we're going to say here he went up thence to penuel and spake unto them likewise and the men of penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth. Had answered him. Now, of course, these are reverse Penuel and Sukkoth in in the in the how we place them at the lines. We didn't put Sukkoth at October second and Penuel at December twenty fifth. Now, why didn't we do that? Why didn't we just put Sukkoth first and Penuel second? Why did we switch them chronologically? I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, so part of it had to do with the symbols of Zeba and Zalmunna. Because Zeba and Zalmunna, these kings of Midian, again, just like Orb and Zeb, they're going to... Those are the ones with the camel um, symbols on their altar or something? Um, yes, so they're going to be the ones with, uh, yeah, these... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know I'm, I'm regaining the story. Yeah, so these tires of the moon, right? Um, so so that's going to represent Collins and Odilio's uh, messages, right? So that's why. So that's why we put them there. Um, and so it fit better with that 49-day period from December 25th to February 12th. But we also know that February 12th is is connected to this 391 words, which we didn't think about before. But anyway, so we go to Judges 8.8. 8. We're going to say that the men of Penuel, um, that they um, are going to speak unto Gideon likewise. So Basically, we're not going to support you. You haven't done anything yet, really. Uh, you know, until you bring us Zeb and Zalmuna, it doesn't mean anything. We're not going to support you, right? And, and they just wanted bread, right? So, so this same thing is here. So there's this lack of support for this message of Gideon. But that's what's being illustrated on Penuel and Sukkoth. And the Judges 8.8 8 brings us to 2 Chronicles 29, where you got the eight days for the priests and the eight days for the Levites to clean the, cleanse the sanctuary. So that's part of the reason why we have that there. And Jeff, Jeff had addressed this uh, 
this doubling of this eight a number of times. And we have, of course, other things, 88 uh, uh, days from, from the time that they begin to divorce until the end of the divorcement is 88 days. Um, so we have it in these lines in a number of places. We're going to say it's that October 2nd to 9th, 2021. And then we have 77 days um, to December 25th. So, so why the 77 days and this 49 days, of course, is 126 days. So how do we address this? What what is this what is this structure illustrating? Now, remember, the 77 days are from October 9th, not October 2nd. Now, we could have easily looked at 84 days, right? If you go went from October 2nd to December 25th, and 84 is, is 12 times 7. But, but we're looking here at this, at the end of that week. So I guess it's a week and then 77 days if you want it to be uh, really precise. But we know 11 times 77. So it's 11 weeks from October 9th to December 25th. We have the 11 and the 77. 777 days, right? And then we have the 49 days, right? Which shows up in the story of Samson dealing with the wheat harvest symbol, but we have it there. And then we have this 126 days. So what is this symbolizing? What is this structure relating to? Okay, December 6, 12, 6. So when we look at December 6, the formalization of the message, it's gonna get, we're gonna have another 126, right? So can, can we see that what we look at with FFA in that December 6 declaration, it's still in our movement. I mean, we could describe it as the uh, the, the spirit of the Could you say that again, please? Could you say that again, please? So December 6th, that's 12-6. And then the next way mark, we're going to mark a 12-6 as well, 126. So that means that what's occurring in that history is related to that declaration on December 6, 2020. Yeah, sounds like it. Okay. I mean, yeah, so you have the numbers, both the numbers are the same, right? One, two, six, one, two, six, right? Yeah. Is there anything in the middle of that, that one, two, six? Um, well, in, in the 126 days? You um, got well, you've got the dates that you're using, and, and um, you've got one, two, six. One, two, six, that, that almost sounds like a, a chiasm. Yeah. Is there and then something got, in the middle we're missing? Well, we have December 25th, 2021. So we, we have this 126 days. Now, in Samuel Snow's letters, from his first letter to his second letter, so from the writing of his first letter to the publishing of his second letter, is 77 days, but he's going to have 126 days. If you go, uh, it's going to be 63 days to um, 
uh, April 19th, and then another 63 days to uh, June 22nd, the Pentecost letter, right? So this relates to those structures of Samuel Snow's letters. The symbols are all there, right? And you have the Pentecost letter, that's the 49 days, right? So you can see how this all relates. And this December 25th, 2021 is a disappointment. I mean, in a, in a sense, right? It's like April 19th. But, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying, that this is symbolizing those symbols in 1844. Okay, yeah. That yeah. separation that happens with the two Passovers and the first day of the first month. There's an apparent connection. Yeah. So when we get to December 25th, 2021, we now have a, a new message, right? This is the second angel arriving. So you can see how this would need to go here. Right. So Colin does his presentation and then that's going to be formalized when um, uh, Odilio does his presentation. And he's going to reference Colin's presentation. Now, what, what Odilio says is that if we don't accept, now I'm putting words in his mouth a little bit. He doesn't say it so explicitly. He implies it. But the idea is, it. I know what you're saying. Yeah, so he says, you know, we need, there's a close of probation for us if we don't accept Colin's prediction. That is, we can't wait till, if his predict when his prediction is fulfilled, we can't just now agree with it. We have to make a decision beforehand, right? That's that's basically what he says. Right. Now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, and, and, and he may not necessarily have meant it in that strong a way. Right. But it's, but it's implied that we need to accept Colin's message. Though That's what it sounded nothing, like to me. Yeah, so there's nothing on February 12th, though, that really supports that conclusion that the Trump prediction is correct. It's just that we have this chronology, and this chronology is correct, and that it witnesses to July 18th with these mandates. And so it's just this, this skip of a step to sort of say, well, that's going to be, you know, this is the testing message for this movement right now. We need to accept Collins, Collins prediction. Um, and I understand, you know, he, he accepted uh, Collins prediction. I, you know, I, I don't talk to Odilio. Um, I know Stephen does, but, uh, you know, Odilio is still yeah. studying, studying these things, right? And Odilio is not really an emphatic person. So, you know, I wouldn't place upon him, you know, that, what he said is is something that he he necessarily means in a in a strong way. It's probably a suggestion of that's how he would be looking at it. But the point is, his presentation here has this um, this connection of this 126 days, and then we know hey, what yeah, William. Well, yeah. I, um, I hate to interrupt, but um. I'm going to fix the little signal, and I just wanted to say um, I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear about your sister. Uh, send my regards. Yeah, my sister-in-law? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, so Angela. Okay. Um, so then what we have on this line is we have this email. Now, this email is 216, so as the RAN notes, uh, 216 is the same symbol as December 26th or December 6th, I mean, or this 126 days. Now it's also six times six times six is 216. So this February 16th date, um, we are placing as this empowerment. And so this is gonna be this email um, from the Canadian group that doesn't, so because of these, these conflicts that occurred over this period of time, um, they're going to decide. Um, and of course, the conflict specifically on my birthday, February 6th, Colin writes me while well, he just sends a link to a video saying that Trump's gonna be, how he's gonna come back into power. You know, some video he got off YouTube. And then um, uh, 
we have this exchange. He he sends this 391 words in five paragraphs. Um, that is a response to the email I sent to him, but it appears to be from Jeff. So that's February 12th. Um, so it's also, you know, two things. It's Odilio's presentation. And so when we look at this second message here, and this is what we're going to look at um, on Sunday, because today is Thursday. It's the 18th day of the fifth month today. Um, so, so we're going to look at this and, and just try to address this second message. But we can see how this is developing, how we understand this line. Um, and, and so I think these lines stand on their own. I think you can take chapter six, seven, and eight, and they stand on their own. We'll finish this off. And then we will look at next week, we will um, look at these lines and why we developed these lines and just try to add some more of the detail. Now, here we still have more detail from, from the verses themselves that we have to look at. So, so we're not really done. It might take us a little while to finish this uh, third line. So um, any, any thoughts before we close with prayer? Yeah, but not about this. Yeah, okay. But, but it is about this. It's, it's specifically about this. So I discovered a few other numbers while I've been, they're not just new discoveries. It's what it is. is, is that, so I've been keeping, did I send you a copy of my notes? Probably. Okay, so um, if you look at uh, the page that says symbols on it, you'll notice that I have, uh, you know, first day, first month, that kind of stuff up the top. And as you progress down, it goes like one, and it, all the things at one we've discovered, then two, and then all the things at two discovered. So two things that I added to the notes that I didn't have before, and I kept seeing this one number, and this is what brought it to me. I kept seeing this 14, and I didn't really have a whole lot on 14. Okay, But all of a sudden, it just popped in my head, Miller's Rule. 14. And so I applied uh, all the rules, number one to, to the one, number two to the two, number three to the threes, you know, on down the list. This is my addition to it. And I started noticing some um, relationships that were directly to those numbers uh, between the symbologies. It, 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 so I have a problem trying to convey exactly where my mind is going. Um, but that is what I noticed. That's been something that's been shown to me here recently. Yeah, we can see with the 14 rules, Miller's 14 rules, that is right. so 7 plus 7. So it's right. Ian, Rachel, plenty and famine, right? Dude, just do a study against those symbols and, and go and sit back and, and just absorb it a little bit. And try to uh, uh, relate the implications. Uh, it, it just had me it completely startled and stirred. Yeah. And, and then we also see the 16 um, or, or 1764, right? There's two 1764 year periods, right? 34 AD looking back to 1731 BC and 34 AD looking forward to 1798, right? right. And So I didn't want to get sidetracked on that, but I also added the commandments in there under these those same number symbols, the one, the two, the three, the four. And that's when I really started seeing things grow. Right. So yeah, look which, at that. Which, which is good. So um, but we can see that all of these symbols all interlock together. These are wheels within wheels. That's my point exactly. And so when we, you know, to appreciate them, I mean, it means that we have to have them organized and we have to see them that they're not confusion, right? And that's what we're, you're trying to do. It, it, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I blurt things out um, to, uh, uh, well, uh, 
the discussion that we had in the email that I responded to that I just made you aware of a little while ago, um, taking that into consideration, I actually thought I was texting you, um, and, 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 but I was texting your wife, and, and then I started seeing something in that. So, um, yeah. yes, we, we really need to confab on this stuff, and I think it needs to be an open forum. Uh, between the uh, the people that are in attendance um, and not a public meeting. Yeah, well, I don't do that. So you're not going to have that happen. What do you mean? You don't do that? Everything that I do is, is open. Okay, so you want to do it now? Or do you want to schedule this? No, we we just do things as part of our studies. Everything I, I, that we do is open and oh. open. Oh, so we can't bring something out and try to show it. Um, we have to study what it is that we don't know that the guy's trying to say. Okay. Um, the, the, here's what I'm getting at. I, I, I'm I just saying everything has to be public. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I, mean, I hear that. Send, I hear you, that can send, you can send me some emails and I can respond to them. No, no, no. Uh, this is this all this stuff we all need to talk about. I mean, uh, Dwight's seeing stuff. You're seeing stuff. I'm seeing stuff. I don't know what um, everybody else is seeing, um, but there's a reason that all of us are all. Then you just communicate with you communicate with everybody, and that's what I've been doing. I've been stressed. I've been sending out these email blasts, uh, the uh, broadcast uh, of these different things. So everything that that I find in my life, and I'm asking other people to look and see if there is things in in their life that is com- like right. kind of parallel to the things that I'm discovering in my life. Right, which is what I've always told people that they need to do when it comes to chronology, that you can't, right? you need to see, find things for yourself. So again, I can't but express everything myself that ever, the way you do. But everything- You can't express my, yourself the way I do. Dwight can't express the way I do. He, dispress, he expresses the way he right. does. And and Stephen as well. And so I'm just trying to express something. I'm I'm not trying to. I'm trying not to sound like a lunatic for sure, mm-hmm. um, but it might blurt out like that. I mean, because I've been known to be called crazy. I've even went to a crazy farm before. Anyway, anyway what I'm spent trying ten to say, days in camp. Yeah. yeah so what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, is that we can find things right, and we can share them with others, but not. Everything that I find in my life do I share. And and not everything that we find has to be shared with everyone else, right? Yeah. I mean, we can use a few examples. Okay. Right here and there. But but I don't think that we should <laughs> look at every single thing that happens in our life and that this becomes what our message is. Because well, you understand what I'm trying to say. Just listen to me for a yes, minute. Yes, I get it. What I'm trying to say is that we have these lines. This is a prophetic line. Things happen that are relevant to the lines that everyone needs to know. Right, exactly. But not everything that happens in my life needs is is relevant to the lines. In in as well mine. And I don't I don't bring those things up. I'm just bringing up some some legal issues. Uh, My birth certificate. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but okay, you get my. I'm point. asking. I'm asking for the these same. These symbols. Kind of- these symbols are these. Everybody can can take these symbols and apply them to their lives. That's we right. We need to know everybody's symbols. I didn't ask for everybody's symbols. I was just asking if people would look at their stuff, yeah, and see fine. if they seen this kind of stuff that I'm seeing. Right. So in so mind. So I don't have a problem with it. I don't know why you're. We're having this discussion in this way. It's pretty straightforward. We all have these symbols in our lives. Everyone should look at them. And we can share them with other people if we want. But we don't need these these symbols that we have in our lives are not all relevant to everyone in this movement. We have these symbols. We have these lines, the prophetic lines, and we can see these symbols in our lives, right? Right. And that's I don't give this stuff to everybody. This but, is right now. It's all the stuff I'm doing. It's been... Posted yeah. to the people that have asked for my email or 
Um, yeah. I have their email that's right. in this particular group. Right. So send it, send out the emails and people can read. And that's what I've been doing. There's people 10 of them. can read them if they want or not. It's not, exactly. it's not important that. that no, it, it's only important to the one that makes it, that, that something clicks in them and they make some sort of connection. And then they start doing something and then they make another connection and that goes back right. to a different connection. Mm -hmm. Now there that's are, what it's really all about. Now there so, are times making the connections. Yeah. So there are times when something happens in my life or whatever that's relevant to to these lines that it's telling us something about where we are now, right? And and other people too have things that they've shared with me that I think are relevant to these lines and where we are now, right? But not everything that you know because there's a lot of us and and that just that. becomes too much information it doesn't I, okay. it, it doesn't add to things these are like little tertiary or quadrinary you know connections they're not our main lines right so well, you know you earlier you said everything every decision every little thing that goes on in our life i clued in on this um, yeah. is related Right. Okay. So for us individually we, we as can make persons, connections. And so I, <laughs> I've right. just spent the last few days making connections in my right. life. And that's, them. that's good. I'm not complaining about that. Right. I, I am complaining about the about idea one. that we need to actually talk about those things. Exactly. That, we that need we to have this contact. I, I don't things. agree. I don't agree with that. You, you can talk about. What? that we have to confab that, you know, that I have to listen to what somebody has to say, because there's, you realize how much time, how much time is used up in my day, addressing all kinds of letters and responses that I have to study out, right? Yours is too much information for me. I, I, it's, uh, uh, it's important to you to understand that. Here? What? Are we seeing a common link here? What's what's a, uh, you know that very complaint, that very complaint that you just made right there, is the exact complaint I hear that comes out of people's mouth about you. And so I don't understand well, what you're saying. I don't understand what you're saying. No, you're 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 mis you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm completely involved in studying everything that comes across my way. Right. But there's no way that I can I can spend time in things that God isn't directing me to study. Right. But I'm I'm answering people all the time. What you're asking is that we somehow need to look at all of these connections in your personal life. No, no, no. That's what you said. No, I'm not asking anybody to look at the connections in my personal life. When what I'm asking for, I'm, these are the things that I've seen. Right. But I'm so asking, them, but I only ask one thing. I ask can you listen to, to me for a minute? Look at their please. stuff can you and, listen to and me see for if there's something that, that comes out in them that they see. If they okay. would like to share that in the future, then that's fine. Right. But, or so if they'd like to personally the share it with me, don't have that's to have fine a conversation. Too. You're you're demanding of my time of something that I I'm can't not demanding of it. I'm asking for it. Okay, but you're not going to get it. Is what I'm trying to tell you. Well, that's my point, right? Because I don't have the time. I don't have the time either. But I've been making the time for all these things for for these other people. Okay, I okay, only have asked me for things. Right. I don't know why they ask me for things and the when, when they do it. But right. what so I why, recognize. Why, why are you having this conversation? You understand that I'm upset about the loss of my my sister-in-law. You're catching me at an emotional time, right? I'm sorry. You, you're not being very kind. I'm not. My intent was to uh, uh, yeah. reveal light. Um, yeah. uh, your interpretation of what I'm saying is in your moment, okay? Um, you, you know, okay, Ron, I'm you don't sorry listen. if we you don't if I'm make, upsetting you, 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 I will stop make, right now. Don't make sense to me, okay? 
and I can't deal with things that don't make sense. I, I'm still going to listen to what you have to say, but you can't demand because I'm not demanding you to do anything. I'm yes, asking. you are. You are demanding me. I'm asking. No, you're, you're selling me. You. I keep telling you no, and you keep asking. Right? I sent you very explicit emails saying no. I sent you a text message through my wife's phone. No, I don't want to have this conversation. I just don't want it. Okay? You want to have it. I don't. I don't I mind you sending me emails. I, I don't I'm mind sorry, you sending Theodore. emails. I, I don't sorry, want to. I'm yes. sorry. Okay. I accept that apology. But you understand why? Yes. Okay. And, and, and you can't say that I'm doing what other people are doing or saying what other people are saying. Because that's not a fair statement. I'm working hard to do all of this work. I'm listening to what I'm keeping my ear to the ground on everything that everyone's saying, but I can't take the time because I've looked at what you've done. I can't understand be people talking in code. I don't accept it. To me, it's a game, right? And, and I can't accept it. Okay. And, and, and I'm sorry about that, but it's just, I can't. And you're asking of me something that I can't do, and it's not fair. And 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 it to me it's demanding. God. What? Perhaps you should ask God for understanding. Okay. What you I'm don't trying think, to say. So you're thinking that I don't ask God for understanding when you say stuff, bro? I didn't say that. Okay, so I you did. Take it, you're mischaracterizing my statement. But you're misrepresenting. So you You're know how, I, how, many, how much let's stop because let's stop. I, have agonized, right. I have agonized over you for a while. And and you're trying to just well that I, I, I don't care. You. Yes, so fine. But I'm not demanding you to agonize over me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not bothering you. You are bothering me. Right. And I care about you, but you can't demand that somebody pay attention to everything that you're saying. I can't do it. I just don't have the time to do it. Now, so obviously we're going to have to edit this video. But uh, to me, it's just. I thought you I don't understand that. You need to explain that one to me, but. Let's close with prayer and finish this. I really wouldn't edit this. Okay. Well, okay. We won't edit it then. We'll just let everybody watch it who wants to watch it. So then I have to say something. What you have, what you have written, these things that you've written, I don't accept them. And I don't accept them because they're irreverent. That's my understanding of them. It's not how a Christian communicates. You don't write in this, this it, to me, it's like a game. And I don't play games of any kind. So I don't want to be communicated. And I told you, I don't want to be communicated in that way. Don't communicate to me in code. Don't call me fly swatter. And don't use words like it, that are, are code from military. I don't want it. I want plain, simple, clear communication. The people need to use God's word reverently. We don't mix sacred and the common. And we don't we don't take what people say and and turn it on them to that they're doing something that someone else is doing without listening to what that person is saying. We have to listen. We have to understand why somebody wants to communicate in a certain way or not. And for me, I just can't do it. You're asking of me something that is impossible. And I've prayed about it. I've agonized over it. Right? So to sort of say I should pray, I mean, I have prayed lots, right? 
This to me, this, this work that God has given us is not some game to, to tickle our intellect, right? To make us feel good about ourselves or that we think something about ourselves that we shouldn't. We need to see ourselves as sinners. And, and this bothers me, right? It really bothers me. You know, so I'm not going to have some kind of conversation about it. Everything needs to be in the open. We just did. I know, but people need to understand where I'm coming from. It's not a rejection of you as a person or a rejection of light. I understand how truth has to come to us. It needs to come through God's word. I'm not saying that things that you see are wrong. I'm just saying that how you're presenting it, I don't think is correct. I don't think that we should present things in that manner. Um, I, I would just like you to know that I'm very sorry about your loss. Okay. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry that this is aggravating. Yeah. When, when, people, when, when people die, it, I, I'm much more emotional and on edge. It's, it's much more difficult to deal with my emotions when I'm grieving, right? Which you understand. So hopefully people watching this video can understand my emotions because I'm still trying to process it. I just heard it, you know, last night at 930. So I stayed up till like 12 and, you know, so that I got up at 530, I slept in. Um, but yeah, it's to me, it, this has struck me very hard. Um, and, you know, when I look at these lines, what I see that I haven't seen in the past, at least as clearly, is the danger that we are in, right? It, it, it just hit me very, very hard, you know, last night and this morning. And, and, and Ron, I've been praying for you. I've been trying to figure out what's going on, but I can't communicate in that way. It, it's just an inability of, of mine. Right. I, I can't I can't talk in that that way. I don't use slang in everyday life. Right. I, I, I actually can't handle it. And maybe that's a fault of mine. But to me, it's just how I was raised. We don't use slang. You know, if you do use it, you use it in a very specific way to make some kind of point at some time or other. But it's not a part of my everyday language. Right. I don't call people bro right i just don't do it i'm I, I find it distasteful that's me personally but i just don't do it and and i'm not telling other people how they should communicate but if somebody is sort of asking that i have to um have all this communication to me that i have to sift through you know military terminology and slang just to and i can't even understand it um you know, well, it's, it's taken me since 2012 to understand what we've been talking about. Right. But what we are talking about it, is... There was a big hard. curve coming into it, but not a real big curve. But it was a big curve, I mean, um, for me. And then and in these last three years, brother, since uh, since I stood up and, and got kicked I, out of the I, FFA I, chats for defending... Anyway, I gotta go. I got to go. We got to pray. Oh, please. Thank so you. I do apologize for anybody watching this video. I know I'm emotional, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate anybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I just want people to understand where I'm coming from. I don't want to be misrepresented. So um, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, please help us. We need you every moment of every day and forgive forgive me for my emotion um for my grief i pray for each person who is studying these truths and to recognize how fragile life is and the opportunities that we're given right now um that we need to make a choice for you Help us to trust in you. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.